All right. Well, good evening. Good to have you. And um, this is Matt 120 session two. Today is January 17, uh, 2018. Let's have a prayer. Start with prayer. Father God, we thank you for uh, today, for tonight, for this session, that again we can continue our study of mathematics and see how you have created this world with such a beautiful pattern. So, um, we can see your handiwork, the mathematical pattern that you have uh, put into this creation, that they all point out to your intelligence, to your power, to your love and care for us. Help us to look at mathematics from this standpoint and not to be discouraged, not to get tired with numbers and symbols and notation but really help us to look at it from a standpoint of that we are learning about God's creation. Uh, thank you for these dear students. Thank you for the online students. We commit them all to your hand and we pray your blessing uh, for our class and for this course and for all the other courses that we are taking. We pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Any question you guys have from... <clears throat> Before, let me adjust this thing. <laughs> Any question? If not, let me just uh, uh, start with. Uh, and, uh, okay, a couple of things let me show you from. Um, on Populi, as I mentioned, if you go on their lesson, you can always find uh, for each session, lesson one, lesson two, the co corresponding to sessions. And you find what we are looking for, the assignments, the syllabus for that session. Um, I'm going to create another one um, tonight or tomorrow uh, for session three. But basically, on your syllabus, you, you can see uh, what you need to do for next session. Um, those of you who have selected, have chosen your chapter summary from Nichols book, um, you know, from starting from third session, you're going to look at the, uh, those PowerPoint presentation. So if, uh, if you be ready, especially those who have chosen chapters one, two, and three, I greatly appreciate it. Be ready for uh, next Wednesday, 24th, to uh, give the presentation. Those who are online, please submit that uh, through Populi. And um, if you can have an audio with it, it, would be great, but it's not required. But basically, submit that through Populi. Uh, all of you, submit your PowerPoint through Populi, but those of who are in class, we will have sometimes. Uh, for you to give your presentation. Question? Yes. You know, in the uh, last class you were mentioning quizzes go mm -hmm. online and do those once they're open. Uh -huh. And then the sec uh, second part is the uh, assignment three. I'm okay. reading on the syllabus here. It says assignment um, three added in the place value systems. Uh huh. That's yeah. the assignment three yeah. that we're this downloading is and doing. Yeah. Right? yeah. This is here. That's assignment three, and that's where you submit that. A quiz, quiz one, what you have to do is to download this, and then answer it, then scan it, and, uh, or if you can, um, uh, if you don't need to uh, do it with hand, uh, if you can do it with your computer, you can just submit it here. All right, and then I, ha I put the answer for that puzzle on your comprehensive math exam here. You know, remember that question uh, about uh, my father's son and whose picture he's looking for? You can go through that, and the answer is basically uh, that man's is my son. Uh, he's looking at himself. <laughs> okay. Any question? Is doing okay, and you know, on popularly for session two, uh, I put those videos. Uh, please make sure that you watch them, and uh, there are a number of excellent videos that you can learn about Egyptian numeration system, Greek, Roman, Babylonian, 
a Chinese and Mayan. Uh, definitely, I encourage you to watch them uh, before you take the quiz, okay? <laughs> All right, any question? All right, then let's go to the PowerPoint. Um, I'm also recording the video, but I'm also just for the backup recording the audio. I will put both of them. Uh, audio is much easier uh, because less takes much less time and space, so I can put that uh, much easier uh, on Populi. The audio, I have to decompress it, and then I will give you guys a link on YouTube. I cannot just drop it on Populi uh, on, because of a space problem. Um, but uh, you can then click on the link and watch it. All right, let's go to session two. We were talking about set and subsets and numeration and all that. Um, I hope you have, you know, to get the best from the class, make sure that you read these things, uh, these chapters before the class um, to get the best from your course. Uh, these are in the PowerPoint, so let me just make sure as far as the recording. Sorry about this. But, you know, actually, this is on the PowerPoint, so you don't really need a whole lot video, but uh, make sure to read your chapters before the class and uh, in this way and go over the PowerPoints. The PowerPoints are your guideline for each session. We are talking about sets, subsets, you know, here we have set number one, you have dinosaurs, then you have butterflies, set number three different vehicles. That can give you a clue that what we are going to talk about. Sets are basically represent abstract representation of physical things, but there are some commonality among them, all right? What is a set? It's a collection of objects which are called elements or member of the set. Um, you know, if you follow the PowerPoint, you will do fine with your assignments, with your quizzes, your tests, but I still want you to read your chapters. A set is well defined if its contents can be clearly determined. Uh, three methods are used commonly to indicate a set. Description, roster form, and set builder notation. Now let's look at the description of a set. Uh, write a description of the set containing elements of the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So the solution, the set is days of the week. Right, simple. <laughs> now that's one thing I shared last week. Um, my undergraduate degree was in mathematics and physics. One reason I chose mathematics was pro provided. If I understood the concept, I had very little work left to do. <laughs> it was very easy, provided that you understood the concept. Uh, listing the elements of the set inside a pair of braces. It's called a roster form. So we put the elements in those brackets or braces, and this is called roster form, where the elements are separated by a comma. For example, you have one, two, three, is a roster form notation for the set whose elements are one, two, three. But if you, you see, then the notation like parentheses or the, uh, just the brackets are not, uh, set because parentheses and brackets do not indicate the set. Um, as I mentioned, um, you know, mathematics is like a language. You are learning a new language. For any language, you have to know vocabulary. You have to know the grammar. So we are learning the vocabulary of the mathematical language. All right? Set are generally named with the capital letters. For example, the name commonly selected for the set of natural numbers or counting number is N. Well, natural number, which is E. So you have here capital N, and then you have the braces uh, 
one, two, three, four, five. The three dots after five called lepsis indicate that the elements in this set continues in the same manner. And you can look at the pattern and it's very easy. What would be the next number? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. Yes. I'm, I believe it is uh, important to make sure the brackets are like that instead of the actual place, correct? Yeah. These, uh, these a set is indicated by braces. Bracket is here. Where is it? Um, oh, oh, bracket's right there. Three. Oh, here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's not a set even though it looks like it, but the language of mathematics doesn't rec recognize that as a set. Now, the roster form of the set, you know, for example, a set A is a set of natural numbers less than five. Now, tell me, let me, okay. <laughs> this uh, recording also creates a little bit of time delay. Because I have to make sure. Let me close some of these. Okay. And then. Go toward here, toward the, the board. <laughs> Tell me, um, if you're talking about a set of how would you write a set a as a set of natural number less than five how would you do that so first we need to use those braces okay and then the name of set A. <coughs> that would go one, three, one comma, two comma, three comma, four. Yeah, that's it. Okay. It's a set of natural <coughs> number less than five. Easy. So, uh, set B is a set of natural number less than less than or equal to seventy five. How would you go for that? And then it's going to be number that's going to be the less than sign. No, let's go one, one, two, two, three, then three. Two dots and seven. No, but the idea is there. The same concept is there. Uh, P is a set of planets in Earth's solar system. Uh, so it's just a name of the, those planets in solar system. Um, you have the natural number. You know, the first one, as you can see on the PowerPoint, you know, um, if it's less than five, one, two, three, four, the other one, B, is less, I'm sorry, less than or equal to 75, so we have to include 75. All right. And uh, let me turn off the cell phone so we don't get calls. And um, those three dots are called ellipses. And then set C, we just put the name of the uh, plants, Mercury, Ven Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. All right? Clear? All right. Okay. So there's a better number of options. It has to be three, right? Usually three. Usually the, that's a symbol. Uh, two <coughs> symbols. Okay. Now, we have other things that we use. Uh, Time <laughs> keep moving this. I hope people can see that. <laughs> That's a thing. 
Um, um, you know, I'm not sure if the recording, video recording is that necessary because everything is on the PowerPoint. Uh, but anyway, the word inclusive, you know, that you will find that used in mathematical, formula mathematical uh, equation. Um, for example, you can express the following in a roster form, the set of natural numbers between four and nine. So you have, you know, again, A is equal, then you have those braces, as you can see your PowerPoint, five, six, seven, eight. You are not including four and nine. But if you want to make it inclusive, then you put four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Inclusive from the, uh, from the name, it includes those numbers, right? Nothing earth shaking. <laughs> set builder notation or set generator notation may be used to symbolize a set and is frequently used in algebra. Now, the number, the symbol that you use, as you can see in the PowerPoint, is that, uh, you know, three, uh, like an E. Uh, uh, you see that, a small E, but uh, uh, <laughs> without the, that little part. That means is an element of whatever set you are talking about. For example, if you have a set A, five, six, seven, eight, we can say six is an element of A by using that sign. Or six is an element of the set five, six, seven, eight. All right? We may also write nine is not. We write that E symbol and just cross uh, with a line cross it, meaning nine is not an element of a set, as you can see on your PowerPoint. Uh, sure. Let me see. I can. I should be able to. Just one moment. Let me. I should be able to see this. It doesn't allow me to see it. Ah, sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any questions so far till the computer decides to continue? <laughs> you should be able, can't you? Huh. Um, but you can see it on Populi when you go there. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Populi has some limitation in, con in comparison to Blackboard. Maybe not. Maybe that's because consider as a school property. <laughs> anyway, um, we can also write, uh, you know, nine, that E symbol cross set. It. It's not a member of A, meaning nine is not element of set A. So we have set builders. You see, you look at this picture, you have then again braces um, and then all of X. Now you have, if you see that vertical line, that means such that you wanna build a set that all X such that X is less than or equal to two. Uh, you see that in your PowerPoint? Okay, then let's see what we can do with that. Uh, here, as you can see, your power. As you can see, your power. X is less than a. So we want to set X that vertical line. X is a natural number less than four. So what would be the set? One, two, three. Following me. The top, top line. Okay, the second line, we want 
x to be less than and equal or equal to a. So you write it as this way. x is a member of natural number and it's also less than or equal to 4. So the set is 1, 2, 3, 4. You want a set that x is greater than a. Now a is 4. Uh, so you want a set that x vertical line and x is a member of net is a natural number, member of natural number, and x is greater than four. So you start five, six, seven, eight, then three dot means it continues infinity. X is less than or equal to a. Um, I'm sorry, less greater than or equal to a. Uh, so uh, you start with four. You here because it's equal, so here it's actually like what you said, it's inclusive, it includes the number four. X between A and B, uh, greater than A, less than B. No, we choose A to be four, B to be eight. So we want a set of numbers such that X is a natural number and is greater than four, less than eight. So it's five, six, seven, eight. But when we put the equal sign, it then becomes an inclusive. So you have four and eight, you have them. And you can remove one from one side or from the other side. So you change the number. You, are you guys following this? You understand that? Okay. Cardinal number of a set. Do you know what's a cardinal number of a set? The number of elements. Cardinal number of a set is a number of distinct elements in a set and is usually uh, referred to by a capital letter A, N parenthesis A. So the symbol NA is read N of A. Okay, like a Star Trek, you remember? <laughs> they had uh, that, uh, uh, those vicious creatures, I forgot their names. <laughs> They, they, they always you go by numbers. Uh -huh. The cardinal number answered the question, how many, how many elements are in the set? So for, for example, look at example eight of page 50 of your textbook. We go there, example eight, page 50 of your textbook. It says find, and find the cardinal number of, of each of the following set. For example, set A is 6, 10, 14, 15, 16. What's its current cardinal number? <coughs> four. Yeah, it just um, has four distinct elements. Oh, actually, example eight. Um, I was doing the check on eight. Example 8a is 7, 9, 11, 13. What's the cardinal number? 4. n of a is 4. The c, look at the c. Can you, without looking at the answer, can you tell what's the cardinal number there? 13, 14, 15, then three dots, 22, 23. What would be the cardinal number? So those three dots, what do they mean? Yeah, from what to what? From, yeah, so 16, 17, 18, 19, and 21. Then the cardinal number of this set starts, you know, the set starts from 13, it goes all the way to 23. Exactly, there are 11, 11 elements. Look at number B. B is a set containing zero. What's its cardinal number? One. How about D? Do you know that symbol? It means empty. Empty. So what's the cardinal number of an empty set? Zero. <laughs> because empty means there's nothing there. <laughs> there's no element. There's no member. Okay? <laughs> okay. Finite and infinite set. When we finish this, uh, we will have a 
break and then I want us to watch the uh, one of the videos that I put on the populate together. A set A is a finite set if n of A is equal to zero. That is, A is the empty set or n of A is a natural number. Meaning, for example, if it's zero, what does it mean? If n of A, cardinal number of a set A, uh, telling us that it has no, um, uh, it has actually, um, no, no number, no, no member. How many? So it's zero. No. Okay. Um, so it's an empty set. It's a finite set. There's nothing there. Zero member. Zero is a number. Okay. That's why. What would be um, like, or any natural number? Pick any natural number. True. So what does that mean? Yeah, it's a, it's a natural number and it's finite. You know, it doesn't go to, it only has three elements. Okay? All right. You guys following? Okay. A set whose cardinal is not zero or a natural number is called an infinite number. Uh, for example, uh, what would be the cardinal number of this set? n with you have one two three four five six and then we have those three dots hmm? no what does forever yeah so the ellipses indicate there is no last or final element it continues all right uh, a universal set of all the elements or member of any group under a universal set is all the elements or members of any group under the consideration. Its cardinal number is infinite and is sign symbol X, uh, actually not X, alpha null. Uh, this is a universal set. Just, just know the language, know the uh, you know, terminology. A universal set. Now equality of set, a set A and set B uh, uh, are equal if they contain the, exactly the same element, regardless of order or even possible rep repetition of elements. We write them like this, set A is equal to set B, using the, the statement. For example, you have a set A uh, containing W, X, Y, Z, and set B containing Z, Y, W, X. We say these two are equal because they contain the same element. Okay. Now let's look at example 10, page 53 of your textbook. Example 10, page 53 of your textbook. Um, you have, you know, he's asking us whether these statements are true or not. Look at number A without looking at the answer. Uh, set 489 and set 894. Are they equal or not? True. How about set one three five and a set zero one three five? Are they equal or not? False. Why? Zero doesn't have the other element. Um, let's look at the checkpoint ten. Uh, set O L D and a set D O L. True, okay. Set four five and set five four and empty. That's a tricky one. True. Yeah, yeah. because it's empty. <laughs> uh, set is a subset of B. Uh, a set A is a subset of B. Then we write it as you can see on the PowerPoint uh, with that symbol. Uh, A is not subset of B, then you have that cross line going over it. 
let's go to page 57, example one. Um, um, set A is 1357. Set B is 1357911. What's the relationship between set and B? Is it a subset of B or not? Why not? But where are those numbers? Yeah, yeah. So they are. So A is a subset of B. Those numbers are in B. Now let's look at the uh, example B. A set A in in which x uh, uh, is defined as x is a letter in the word proof any letter in the word proof b uh, is a set of y where y is a letter in the word proof so is a subset of b you got a wrong book so this is in the angle. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. That's for probably for the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. No, no, no. Please get the correct yeah, textbook. I would say dependent on which writing you put. Well, no, no. Look at it. Look at, uh, you know, always look at set B. Then to say is the question is A subset of B. In order to do that, all the elements of A must be in B. Now, B can have more. That's not a problem. But if missing some element, then it can't. Uh, the word proof and roof. Let's look at that. Okay, why? So you have, but you would turn it around, B would be a subset of A. Oh, yeah. So you have proof and proof. But here, uh, if this is uh, set B and this is set A, um, this is set, uh, I'm sorry, this is set A and this is set B, uh, this has P, which is not there. So it doesn't have it. Okay, so uh, <laughs> okay. proper subset A again we go back to our PowerPoint. A is a subset of uh, but not equal to B, then it's called a proper subset. For example, in that the proof and roof, um, well, actually, that's not a subset at all. But in the other example that you had in your textbook, um, example A, 1357 is a proper subset of the set B on page 57 because all its elements are in set B, but it's not equal to it. set B has more. Following me? Uh, again, let's look at page 58. Uh, if you go to your textbook on page 58, for example, you have a set one and three, set A. Then you have set B, one, three, five. Uh, this is, is this a, first of all, is this a, a subset or not? One, three, and one, three, five. Uh, a, a is not a subset of B. Well, well, it's a subset. Yeah, yeah, there, it is a subset. Oh. Now, A and B. What are the elements of A? 1, 3. No, no, no. Uh, what are the numbers in A? 1, 1, 3. 1, 1, 3. And what are the elements of B? 1, 3, and 5. 1, Okay, so first of all, is A a subset of B or not? 
these elements are there. Now, if a proper subset to be a proper subset, it should be not equal. Very cool. The whole thing has to be very cool. Oh, yeah. no. So it is a proper subset. A and B are not equal because B has an extra element. Um, so you got, you got to be careful about the use of that symbol, all right? Now, look at um, uh, example two, page 59. Uh, okay, uh, example two, page 15 and uh, checkpoint two. Um, um, look at example two, page 59. Set A is a set of X and X is a person uh, living in San Francisco. B is a set of person living in California. First of all, is A subset of B or not? Yeah. So all the people in, living in San Francisco also, they're living in California. So A is a subset of B. Is this a proper subset? No? Why? It's not a proper subset because Yeah, it is a proper subset. It's not equal. It can it is contained in B. It's not equal to B. Look at uh, example B on page 59 of your textbook. You have set A two four six eight, set B two eight four six. First of all, is A subset of B or not? Yeah, we have two four six eight. And then we have 2, 8, or 6. Okay. So it's a subset of E. Proper or not proper? What? Therefore, it is not a proper subset because A is equal to B. So, two, you have two, you have four, you have six, and you have eight. Okay. The empty set as a subset. The empty set is a subset of every set and is symbolized by, you know, zero uh, with a cross line. Furthermore, the empty set is a proper subset of every set except itself. Uh, it cannot be a proper, because it's equal to itself. So empty is always, for, uh, so basically for B, uh, <laughs> And the empty set is always proper subset of B because empty means nothing. So in every set, there you can always put nothing and it will not change any value of the set. You following? <laughs> okay. For any set B other than the empty set, um, um, for any set B other than in, uh, if, now, if, B is the um, not the uh, the empty set itself. Then it's always a subset. Following. Look at this diagram on your PowerPoint. Uh, we we are talking about the complement and the universal set. Uh, what time is it? Seven forty-one. Um, Complement of a set is symbolized by A prime. 
to here. A, I didn't have that part of moment there. Camera. And then you have this circle, which is A. So you have complement of say, set A. What is a complement? Is A prime. It completes it. Okay. Uh, is a set of all the elements in the universal set that are not in A. Okay. For example, think of California and San Francisco again. If set A is all the people living in San Francisco, what would be A prime? Yeah, all the people living in California. That you are not living in San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Intersection of the sets A and B symbolized by that uh, this sign. <coughs> Here you can see in your PowerPoint the intersection of A and B right there. That yellow part. Intersection of set A, B, and C is this white part. Only A and C, the purple. B and C, the blue one. Okay. These are very useful for research, for demography, for social studies for church, for ministry, because you can look at your church, your ministry, the people that you're working with, and categorize them um, on different spiritual level, their relationship to Christ, where they are, finding all kind of really interesting information that can help you, your ministry. The union of set A and B is symbolized again by like the symbol U, as you can see it in your PowerPoint is a set containing all the elements that are members of set A or of set B or both sets. So you have union, parenthesis A and B is equal union of, union of B and A. You can see that picture. Then we have these Venn diagrams. <coughs> Very interesting. Here in the Venn diagrams, basically you have set A, set B, and set C. And these different elements, set A contains A, B, e, G, and D. B, set B contains little b, F, G, and D, set C, C, E, G, and F. And then outside, none. Okay? Again, these are used in social studies, demographic studies, political science. They can be used in the church uh, for all kinds of... Uh, uh, research to find where people are. Yeah, yeah. Ah, for example, look at this example on your PowerPoint. Uh, these four people play soccer. These three people play tennis. Okay. The union of these two would be all, all of them. All, uh, Alex, Hunter, and Casey, Boo, and Jake. All six of them. Um, so you write it with soccer union, uh, the soccer set and union of soccer and tennis in all these guys. Okay. I shall <laughs> this is called a Venon diagram, union of set two sets. The intersection. What does the intersection not here means? What, what does that intersection mean? What's the intersection of those those two sets and what does it mean? It means that those two individuals both play tennis. Okay. Now, can you give me some idea, some example? How this can be used in church ministry? Is there a place for it? Hmm? Uh -huh. You can find 
you can study your congregation, you can analyze it and find whether, okay, this is the number of male that we have, number of female we have, teenagers, uh, how many of them are believers, how many of them come to Sunday school, how many of them come to Bible study and find the intersections. Ability to yeah. Progress yeah. Okay. Let's look at the difference of two sets. It's just subtraction. When you no, when you come here, you're talking about you take away all the people that uh, are in both sets, and what is remaining is only Alex and Hunter, uh, and they are only soccer players. Again, you can use this in ministry and find out who are the people who are not coming um, to the Bible study. And then you can look for reasons and you can use that to follow up and get some result. Okay. So, so far, U is union. It means it's in either set, the, the upside down U or looks like N, is intersection must be in both sets, and then the minus is a different in one set, but not in the other. Um, okay, let's say the third set is a volleyball, which contains Drew, Glenn, and Jade. So we have a volleyball set of these three elements. S, soccer players, T, tennis players. V means the set of volleyball players, okay? Now, if we do a union of these three sets, meaning these people play all those three games, who do you find? Who is the person who plays soccer, tennis, and volleyball? Who is the... What's the result of the union of those three sets? Remember, you had three sets. Okay. Okay. The union of all, all of them, all of them, okay. Um, what is the, uh, you know, what would be the, let's say, intersection of all three sets? All of them, all three sets. Drew, he plays all three. Uh, Jay plays tennis and uh, volleyball. Uh, so he's an intersection of those two sets. Uh, no one plays only tennis. Notice that. Okay. So again, you can use that in church ministry. Uh, where are these people? Do they come to church? Male, female, their background, their economical background, their you know, um, religious background. And you can find interesting information from them. Yeah. The difference on this would be that Alex and Hunter only play softball and Hunter play tennis. Yeah, Alex and Hunter only play soccer. That would be the difference. Exactly. Very good. Very good. Now, set S is uh, just Alex, Casey, Drew, and Hunter. Okay, these are the people who play soccer. S union of set T and V are those four people that that you know I uh, have them have them in blue. Casey, Drew, Jade, and Glenn. Intersection of uh, S and V, soccer and volleyball, the person who plays both of them is Drew. And we use that symbol, okay? And what is the empty set here? <clears throat> yeah, the intersection of set S, and we, both soccer and volleyball, but they don't play tennis, uh, minus set T, uh, empty, okay. 
following? Are you guys following? <laughs> Don't fall asleep. <laughs> okay. Then we have here, we come to the universal set. The universal set contains Alex, Blair, Casey, uh, Drew, Aaron, Francis, Glenn, Hunter, everybody, everybody in that uh, rectangle shape, okay? That's a universal set. Blair, Aaron, Francis, and Ira are complement. Following? Okay. Now, everyone who does not play soccer, so you look at the set S, and everybody else would be Jake, Glenn, Blair, Aaron, and Francis, and Ira. Um, you, the universal set minus the soccer set. Okay? The complement, everything that is not in S, which would be Blair, Aaron, Francis, Ira, and those two guys, uh, Jaden, Glenn. And you write that as S prime. Let's look at example three on page 68. And, uh, so the complement is the point. Yeah. Page <coughs> 68, example. Okay. Finding a set complement. If let U to be a set of number from one to nine and A is one, three, four, seven, what would be the A prime? Not a. A prime contains all the elements of the set U, the universal set that is not in A, okay? So we have one, three, four, seven in A. So we look at U, which is the universal set. You cross those numbers, you're only left with two, five, six, and nine. That's A prime. And you have the figure on uh, the figure 2.13 on your in your textbook okay following now why are even sets are important as I mentioned we can use them for all kind of studies uh, they help us to treat mathematical object as mathematical object itself um, they are a starting point for any mathematical definition. Without said, we would be very, have a difficult time defining most mathematical uh, um, principles. Um, for example, uh, function. A function is a rule that maps numbers to other numbers. But what does a rule mean? It can seem very vague. So for example, uh, 2x, the same, I, is, is 2x the same rule as 2x plus 1 minus 1? Yeah, there are different rules in, in, in these two equations, but the results are similar, or they are calculated in different ways, but they always yield the same number, because plus 1 and minus 1 are canceled. Uh, but hence, we have a function as a set of ordered pair. Following me? Okay. Again, um, in chapter six, we will talk about domain of function. A function, as I mentioned, maps numbers to numbers, but the same concept of a rule that maps things to things pops up all over. Uh, you know, you have operators, map functions to numbers, operators in group. Uh, we use set in many, many ways in mathematics. And we use sets, subsets in social sciences. You know, um, I had a course when I was a math major, mathematical modeling, and we would do traffic studies. You know, you know do you believe me, the city of San Diego, all major cities have mathematical uh, mod, people, mathematicians who model the traffic and they try to come with some kind of uh, solution to ease the traffic, what are the things that we can do? It's the answer is not always just building more roads. 
lots of time has to do with uh, directions of the roads. Um, <laughs> lots of time, you know, those time limit that you see on those, um, you know, traffic light that let you to get into the, uh, the main flow of the freeway, they are not chosen just uh, uh, without any reason. They use mathematical models determining how many seconds it will take for a car to be added to the flow of traffic so that well, in, in what way we can reduce the load of the traffic. All right. Um, in algebra, in topology, we use sets all the time. Okay, now we come to number presentation and calculation chapter four. Um, you know, let's take 10 minutes break. <laughs> I think it's a good place to take a break. So let me stop the audio. Let me stop the video.